Hi guys, this is Sadek from Rodman.com. In this video, we'll show you how to root any custom ROM via Sokisu Ultra. So please take a backup of all data on your phone and let's get started. There are two ways of doing this job. First one, simply flash a custom kernel that supports flashing the in the custom ROM and that also supports the Sokisu Ultra. That's quite hard to find, I know that, but if you are able to find the kernel, well and good, or else we'll then show you how to get the job done via using a patch boot or the init boot file. I show you both the methods. First off, let's take the easy way out. So if you can find a custom kernel that supports the custom ROM and also supports the Sukisu Ultra, then in that case, let me show you what needs to be done. So please take a backup of all data on your phone. And when that is done, let's get started. So first off, if you are using a custom ROM, in my case, it's the Lineage OS ROM, any ROM will do. So there are two ways of flashing the custom kernel from the custom recovery like Orange Fox or WRP recovery, or you may also use the ASP recovery like Lineage OS recovery, C R recovery. The choice is all yours. In my case, I have the ASP recovery. So in case you are using the WRP recovery, then simply boot the phone to that recovery. After that, go to install, choose the kernel zip file, swipe to flash, that is it. After that, install the Sokisu Ultra APK file and you obtain root by Sokisu Ultra. But if you don't have a custom recovery, you're having an ASP recovery. In that case, you'll have to do an ADB side load. Let me show you what needs to be done in that case. So go to the settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. Then go back, go to system, dev options and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. When that is done, let's now boot the phone to the recovery mode. For that, get the platform tools from my article, extract them onto the PC, then type in CMD over here, hit the enter key. Now type in the command of ADB, reboot, recovery, hit the enter key. You will now be inside the USB recovery in just a few seconds. So let's wait for that to complete. And after that, once you've got the custom kernel, in my case, I'm using this kernel. Let me show you the Templar kernel. This is the one. So let me copy the kernel from here, paste the kernel inside the photo of platform tools. Once you have pasted it, rename it to something shorter. Let's rename it to kernel and the name becomes kernel.zip. Now let's flash this kernel onto our phone via the USB recovery. So go to apply update, apply from ADB. Okay, use the volume keys, apply from ADB. And now open the same window over here. Then let's do an ADB side load. Type in the command of ADB side load, file name which is kernel.zip. Hit the enter key. The flashing will now start. And since it's not a part of Lineage OS, I'm getting this warning. Just tap on yes. The flashing will then start. Yes. And this will take just a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to complete. So guys, the flashing was very fast. It's now done. So let's tap on reboot system now. Again, let me use the power key. And now the phone will go to the OS with the custom kernel installed. And this kernel also supports the Sokisu Ultra. So my last action is to simply install the APK file of Sokisu Ultra. And then I would have obtained root. So you may simply get the file from the official GitHub link. So go to their official link. And from there, Simply get the APK file and transfer the file onto your phone. This is the file in my case for the Sokisu Ultra. You could see the official GitHub page. I have got the APK file. Let me just verify it once. Sokisu Ultra over here. So my phone will now boot to the OS. And when that happens, transfer the file onto your phone, then install the APK file as well. So it's now complete. It's time to check now. Allow debugging. Okay, it's fine. Change it to file transfer from here. Copy the APK file, paste the file onto your phone. Just give me a few seconds. Paste it over here. It's now complete. Now open the files app and install the APK file. Allow from this source, install. So guys, as you could see, it's showing as working. So we have installed. So guess who Ultra, we obtained it as well. If in your case it's showing as not working, then please simply flash the custom kernel once again via the recovery and that issue will be fixed. It's just a normal issue. Simply flash the custom kernel once again and you will then get the working over here as you could see. So the steps are quite simple in, in case of the recovery. If you're using a custom recovery, simply flash the zip file of the custom kernel via that recovery. If you're using a USB recovery, in that case, do an ADB side of the recovery file and then finally install the APK file of the Sokisu Ultra and you could now see we have obtained root via this. So the task stands complete. But guys, that's not an easy task to get a custom kernel that supports the Sokisu Ultra. In that case, let's go for the second method. This is valid across all the custom ROMs which we have. So in that case, you will simply have to extract the boot file or the init boot file, patch it via the Sokisu Ultra, then flash by fastboot command. 
So let me show you what needs to be done. So first off, get the Android SDK platform tool for my article, extract them onto a PC, which we have done just now, as you could see over here. After that, enable USB debugging onto your phone. So for that, go to the, the settings menu. From there, go to about phone, type on build number seven times, then go back, go to system. Then from here, go to dev options, enable USB debugging, which is now enabled as you could see. Moving on with the next step, which involves unlocking is quite obvious. You should have done unlocking because you are on a custom ROM by now. Then you have to extract the file of boot or the init boot from the custom ROM. So first off, get the build number of the custom ROM, which you have currently, then get the exact same ROM onto your PC. So for example, in my case, this is the build number of my phone. So you have to get the exact same firmware, the custom ROM, which is there onto your phone and then extract the custom ROM and get the file of boot or the init boot. If your phone came with Android 12 or older version, then get the boot file. If your phone came with Android 13 or higher version, in that case, use the file of init boot. In my case, the phone came with Android 12. So I'm using the file of boot IMG file. So please make sure to keep this point in mind. So in case of lineage OS, they also give you the file of boot or the init boot. You could see I have got the file in my case, but that is not the case with most of the ROMs. In most of the ROMs, you will not get any of these files. You will only get the ROM file. So in such cases, simply extract the ROM zip file. I'll show you how. Once you do an extraction of the ROM zip file, you will get a, a payload bin file, which is something like this. Extract the ROM zip file, extract all, and you will get a bin file. So you have, now you have to extract the bin file, and after that, you will get all the IMG files from the phone of that custom ROM. So first off, you could see it should be of the same build number. And if you're using Lineage OS, then you will easily get the file from their official site only. But for all the other ROMs, you will not get the file. Simply, you have to copy the extract the ROM zip file, then copy the file of payload bin, get the file boot enhanced tool from my article, extract the tool onto your PC, then paste the file of the bin file onto your, P your PC as well. So let me just give me a second. And now let's paste the file from the, the custom ROM over here. The lineage OS, it's the lineage OS ROM. One that is complete, learn the file boot enhanced tool by XT file. After that, just give it a few seconds to open up. This might take around 10 to 20 more seconds. So let's wait. Then go to payload dumper, click on browse, choose the payload bin file from the custom ROM. Then go to the payload dump, the partition tab and from here, choose the boot file or the file of init boot, which you require. In my case, it's the boot file. Choose the file, allow incremental, extract image, choose the location, click on OK. And then you will get the file onto your PC. When that is done, please paste the file inside the folder of platform tools. So you could see this is the file which I've just got. Paste the file here inside the photo of platform tools. This will take just a few seconds and we have got the file. Replace the file. So this is the file from the, the custom ROM which we have got. So you may either use this file from here or simply extract the payload bin file of the ROM and get the file. So guys, we have now got the boot file from the custom ROM. So our next action is to transfer the file onto our phone. Just give me a second to so copy the file from here. Paste the boot file onto your phone. It's the same boot file which you have got from the custom ROM which is there onto my phone. I've done the extraction using the file boot enhance tool as I've shown you. So let me paste the boot IMG file from onto my phone. Once that is done, now please install the Sukisu Ultra app onto your phone. Okay, as you could see, I've removed the root from my phone. I've just done a factory reset. The root is now gone because earlier I shown you how to root via the custom kernel and a custom recovery. In that case, I obtained root on this phone only, but now I've removed the root. I've just done a reset. So now I'm st starting from scratch once again. So on that note, let's now install the Sukisu Ultra app onto our phone. The link I've already given. So this is the link. Get the app onto your phone. I might be having the APK file. This is the APK file. So install the app onto your phone. This will take just a few seconds. Now open it. Tap on click to install. Then LKM repair installation. Choose the file of boot or the init boot which we have just got. This one. So it's the boot file in my case. Then tap on next. Okay, it's so asking for the KMI version. I'll show you what needs to be done over here. First off, please find the kernel of your phone, the kernel version number, go to settings. Then it's usually in the system Android version. System Android version, which is a, okay, about phone, sorry, it's in the about phone section. Then go to Android version from here. See the kernel version. If you cannot find the kernel version, not an issue, simply make a search over here. Search for the kernel version and then you will get that. So choose it and the one in our case. So the Sukisu Alter asking for any one of these options. Let's see what is the case in our phone. 
so i made an article on that it's there in this article only at the very end you could see how to find the kmi version of your phone okay just let me do a refresh and then you will have the kmi version over here so even though the android version and the the kernel version is 510240 gki but we have to use in my case is the android 13510 so why is that the case even though i'm on android 15 why i'm using the android 13 build so let me show you why let's get started so first of all find the kernel version in my case this is the one as you could see so the kernel version is 510240 then gki means the generic kernel image and then we have the get commit hash which is this one the third one so in case of the kmi syntax it is as follows the android api the kernel major dot minus dash patch so in our case the android version is 15 the os version is quite obvious then the kernel version is 510240 so the, the syntax is as follows android is there android api is 15 then the kernel major is 5 minor is 10 dash patch patch is 240 so this syntax in our case will become as follows android is the android keyword api is 15 then kernel major is 5 minus 10 dash 240 so we have got the kmi but the android 15 os still use the same android 5.10 gki branch that was first used in android 13 so there's no change in that so we have to use the official name for the given by google for the android 13 only that is why the api will become 13 so we are using the android 13 5 10 240 this is the kernel version my case is the same you don't have to use the other part which is the this one that's not required only this one and the android version is required although it's android you could see 15 but it's used the same android 13 5 10 gki branch that was first used android 13 so we have to use the android 13 only this this is the gki version in our case the kmi version sorry so we'll use the same in the sukisu ultra so Android 13, 5, 10, 240, even 240 is not required. The patch is also not required. Simply use this one. So Android 13, 510, tap on OK. We'll now patch the file and we'll take just a few seconds. You could now see its patch and place in the downloads folder. So let's copy the file from there. Downloads. This is the patch file. Let me refresh it once. Yes, this is the same file. Copy it from here. Paste the file inside the folder of platform tools which is here now let's rename it to something shorter let's rename it to sukisu underscore patch just give me a few seconds so it should be let's remove everything from here sukisu underscore patch makes more sense hit the enter key and now we have to flash the file onto our phone so first boot up onto the fast boot mode for booting to fast boot mode the command is adb reboot bootloader hit the enter key and we are now in the fast boot mode. Now, if you're using the boot file, then the command is different for init boot. The, the command is different for the boot file. This is the command for boot flash boot. We will flash in the boot slot, quite obvious for the boot file. For the file of init boot, we'll flash in the init boot slot. And the file will be the same as before. In case of the boot, it will be the patch boot file. In case of init boot, it will be the patch file of init boot. So keep this point in mind. So in my case, there's the boot file. So I'm using the fast boot flash boot command. Copy the command form here, paste the command onto your phone and paste the command in the CMD window, hit the enter key. The flashing will now start, take only a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to complete and now type in the command of fastboot reboot and let's see what happens. The phone should now boot to the OS and we should have obtained root by the Sukisu Ultra app and the boot patch file. The first booting up might take up some time. That's all normal, nothing to worry about. So let's see what happens now. If you have used the right GKI and KMI version, the phone should not boot to the OS. So let's see if that is the case or not. After the Poco logo, I guess we should now move by with the next step. And it's just a first time boot up. As you could see, we are booting to the OS. So our test of the KMI version was right. We have used the right KMI over here. This is very important. If you use a wrong KMI, then the phone might end up in a boot loop. If you're not sure of the KMI version, you may ask me as well, but please don't use the wrong one. Your phone will be in the boot loop and then you have to flash the stock, the custom ROMs boot IMG file to fix the issue. But please don't use the wrong one. Anyways, you could now see we have got the file. We have now patched and flashed the file from Sukisu Ultra. Now launch the app. And so guys, I have told you earlier as well, in some cases, you must still get this not installed message. That's all normal, nothing to worry about. Simply please reflash the file once again. So it's nothing to worry about. Just go to the fast boot mode once again. ADB reboot bootloader from here. And then please refresh the same file once again. 
and then after that it will be fixed with ease this is just a slight i don't know bug or something like that so just flash the file once again in my case this is the flash command powerful flash boot sokisu ultra sokisu patch dot img the flashing takes a couple of times and then the issue will be fixed this happens sometimes in my case so let's now have a look this time around the issue will be rectified and we should now have the root file sokisu ultra this might happen with both the methods even the manual flashing of the custom the custom kernel via ASP recovery or the table hopper recovery in that case also you might face this issue so please reflash the file once again in case of the kernel please reflash the custom kernel in case of the patch file reflash the patch file and then the issue will be fixed let me show you that the first hand experience i've got it from numerous tries this is the only thing which sometimes might lead to an issue but not a major issue just flash the file once again and now let's see what happens the phone is booting to the os in a few more seconds when that is complete so let's launch the app now and you could see showing as working so if it's showing as not installed not an issue simply reflash the file once again then do a reboot and you could now see it's working so guys that's all from this video just to recall there are two ways to obtain root via the sokisu ultra on the custom rom first one is to simply flash a custom kernel that su supports sokisu ultra it's quite rare to find but if you have one simply flash the custom kernel via the custom recovery like the rp or do an adb cycle by an aosp recovery like linux os recovery or if that is not possible then you may simply extract the boot file or the init boot file from the same custom rom which is there onto your phone you may extract via the firebot enhance tool extract the rom you will get a payload bin file extract the bin file via firebot enhance tool then extract the boot file or the init boot file patch the file via the sokisu ultra and flash by firebot command just keep in mind to choose the right kmi version the kernel module index which is given at the very end you could see how to find the kmi version in my case is this one so choose it tap on okay it will now patch after patch you simply flash the file by firebot command and in some cases i'm again repeating you might get a not install message so in that case again flash the file or the custom the custom kernel whatever you are using do that and then that's it you could now see we obtain root so you may easily now give all the apps the root access from this page let me show any third party system apps okay from here so system apps so for example as of now even though my phone is obtained root if i now try to use the command of adb shell let me show you what i mean adb shell then su you will see it's not rooted because we have to give it the root access from the app only you will not get any su request for in case of matches you always get a su request that is not the case over here so here you will simply have to give it the root access for the shell app so go there enable super user and now if i type in su you will see i got the hash though it's not working in the rooting environment so please do the same for all the app of your choice from here you will flash the module of your choice just go to install choose the module whatever you want let's say from download if i so can you don't have any module flash the module zip file do a restart and then that is it and you may from here tweak the app settings if required and guys that is just about it if you have any query let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching